Star Solicitor Alpha 3.22 Rex to Riches is now live. What's new with the patch, feature and ship wise, what events and sales are on now, we're going to be delving into all you need to know. So, there was no long term persistence wipe with the patch. However, you will have to recustomize your character. There is new things to customize your character with, so that's not a problem. Um, you will have lost things like the refinery jobs that were on the go, ammo, food, those sort of items, some items and ships that weren't logged properly. Hopefully, you've kept all your ships and Alpha UEC, though. You'll probably want to delete your user and shader folder, if updating the game anyway. I'll link that down below how to do that. New feature-wise, we have Structural Salvage. You can now use the Vulture and Reclaimer to do a, another final level of salvage on a ship. While in salvage mode, which you do by pressing M, um, and if you're in the co-pilot chair of the Reclaimer, you press N to get into this salvage mode in that chair as well now. Um, you can go into Fracture mode, by pressing right alt and w this will break ships down within an area those ships have to have no power no shields anything like that um, and then you break them up into little pieces you can then disintegrate them by pressing right alt and s these then get sucked in to the ship and basically get turned into construction materials this clears up the ship from the game but also if you haven't looted the ship fully if you haven't removed all the components you want if you haven't hull stripped it yet you will lose all that because it's basically just mulches it all down salvage ships now have a big buffer 13 scu for the vulture and 240 for the reclaimer these are little storage areas in internally um that you can fill before you actually need to dispense those salvage material into cargo boxes these cargo boxes can also now be of larger sizes and there are various ui updates to improving the mechanics you can dispense all the way up to eight SCU boxes in the Reclaimer. There's location updates. There are 15 new derelict settlements on Microtech and Hurston. Some will appear on the star map, others you'll have to find or get through missions. NPCs live there and they can either be independents or from the Duster faction. They've updated the Microtech locations with denser forests. This was causing lots of performance issues and although performance issues to some degree still persist, they're not even um, fractionally as bad as they used to be. They've also increased the Crusader Planet Com Array to encompass all of the planet. Jumptown's had an update and there is a new island location on Hurston for Jumptown and Jumptown's going to start on the 22nd of December again. AI have had on on-foot performance optimizations. They've reworked and added long hairstyles, 20 of them from Squadron 42. NPCs make use of these but characters can also now use them as well. It makes a big difference being able to have long hair and good looking hair. New ships, the Santok Yai, which is the Xi'an medium fighter. You also have the X1 series with the X1, the Force and the Velocity bikes and they are origin luxury bikes. We have the Drake Cutter Rambler as well, which is sort of a surprise release. This is a long range explorer version of the Drake Cutter. It's still a starter ship, but it's like a slightly more premium, longer range one. Ships have been added to the in-game shops as well. So you've got the Murai Furies and the Miss Cull C available in in-game shops. So you can buy them now. Um, you want those other ones, the Santok Guy, the X1, the Drake Cutter Rambler, they will be available in the in-game shops in the next major patch. So um, the Q1 2024 patch. There's a ship sale on as well. The 400i is available. The C1 Spirit, the Cutter Rambler, the Freelancer, the Reclaimer, the Reliant Tana, the Santok Guy, the Terrapin, Vulture, X1 series, so the X1, the Force, and the Velocity, all available. And with ground vehicles, I always say definitely buy them in game because they're so inexpensive to get in game. But I'm, I'm not your dad. Luminalia, that event's running, which means that there are gifts to find in game, although um, they're not particularly valuable to sell. But they're, they're cool little items. You can store them up if you want to. Um, there's interesting lootables that you can find in loot containers and cargo missions that are um, Xmas themed. There's also a Christmas themed Gun Rush. Uh, on Arena Commander. Cargo updates. So they've put in these new cargo containers that allow you to store commodities and items in them and then access them as if they're inventories. So you can get um, size one, two, four, and eight SCU containers and they can be purchased through shops. You then take them out of your location inventory and drop them into your ship. The best thing about these is that you can 
put whatever you want in these boxes pretty much and then you can sell the contents of those boxes straight from your ship when you're at a, a kiosk so uh, there have been tweaks to tractor beams and cargo stacking as well cargo can't be removed from a ship cargo grid except by the owner and party members of that ship while the ship has integrity stealing cargo is a crime as well in a monitored zone liberating cargo i believe is still fine there's been a procedural weapon recall and fps combat balance so this update has overhauled the recoil of majority of weapons to use new and improved procedural recoil. In addition to this, the arc-like pistol has had a full rework and now is a burst pistol, and with the alternate fire being a single shot, the LH-86 pistol is now fully automatic but has reduced damage. The Demico S-71 and P-4AR have increased fire rates. The Lumen-5 burst delay has been decreased too. Weapon knockdowns happen less, occurring in situations where you feel they should occur rather than just all the time. Damage modifiers have been adjusted to allow for more consistent firefights and times they're sort of pushing higher times to kill. Sniper rifles have been tweaked to avoid one-shotting when hit by them if you're wearing heavy armor. Low health limbs no longer increase stamina or lower speed. Med pens fully heal players. The bearing F S9 Ballistic LMG has had its ammo count reduced to 75. The R97 shotgun has an ammo count of 18 now. They've reduced damage and speed of the Kassar Ballistic Sniper Rifle projectiles. Their armor prices have been increased um, pretty much everywhere, but not flight suits. The tractor and towing UI have been updated to make everything look and feel a bit better. Ship mining has had a balance pass, including adjustments to scaling for ship mineable nodes to adjust mining to trend closer at all, all sort of areas towards prospected difficulties. There have been gravlev and bike updates. Shield components have now been removed from most bikes, although we'll see what happens with that. Some bikes are supposed to have shields, some are not. Gravlev vehicles can be spawned at ground ASOP terminals now. They've adjusted spring stiffness for hover bikes too. Arena Commander has seen a lot of updates as well. Multi Crew has finally come to Arena Commander. You can play with your friends and have them on your ships and stuff like that and in your tanks in squadron battle, in team tank battle, free flight and swarm modes. Spawn as a turret or as a crew member and then battle it out. You can also leave your chairs, which is awesome. So you'll probably want to um, customize your FPS loadout from the front end um, to, to equip gear for those scenarios because yeah, you can board ships and all that sort of stuff. This allows for some awesome PvP and PvE gameplay in Arena Commander. You can spawn in different ships and put them into uh, one of your four slots without leaving the match as well, which is another great addition. Uh, there's some new maps, Maker's Point, that's available in all FPS modes, and Bloodshot Ridge, which is available in all game modes except a Classic Race and Pirate Swarm. Endless Vandal Swarm is now a core mode, I believe. It's available to play with new master modes that are in testing. We've got a new experimental mode cycle. So experimental modes are available in Rear Commander. They're basically limited time game modes that Cloud Imperium wants to test for some reason or potentially add to the sort of core experience. Eventually after tweaking or whatever, they should be changing typically each week and sometimes you get one or two uh, different modes at a time. I'll link the schedule down below. There's things like the Luminalia gun rush being run at the moment, but there's team elimination modes. There's, there's lots of stuff. The plans for the cycle are for the different game modes, Gun Rush, which is now a core mode, so that's available throughout the cycle. This is Deathmatch, the first to get 16 kills. You get a different weapon each kill, and then whoever gets all the 16 kills wins. Gun Rush, very good fun. Team Elimination, this is 12v12 teams, UEE versus Pirates, Team Deathmatch, Kill Collector, you have a bit of a fight. It's a 12 player elimination style mode where opponents drop trophies and you need to grab those trophies to earn points, basically. Duo Showdown. Utilize teamwork and coordinate together in this best of three dogfighting mode. This is the fight or flight mode that they showed at CitizenCon that they had the tournament for. Tank Royale. Players face off in a free for all tank battle. They've tuned the tanks a bit better. They've got improved physics. They've also added the Tumbral Storm into the mix as well, so it's not just the Nova tank. There's also Team Tank Battle, slightly larger scale than Tank Royale. You've basically got two teams fighting off against each other that can also have multi crew tanks now, which is absolutely awesome. But also the Tumbral Nova is in there. There's Single Weapon Elimination, which is Deathmatch. And uh, this time it's using the Gemini A03 Sniper Rifle. They've updated Friendly fire and getting kicked from matches. Distortion damage now rewards points. Ballistics now replenish when you spawn. There are updates to the classic race mode. Um, race and lap times now include milliseconds. Times will show as notifications upon completing them. 
Racers will be punished for five seconds of their lap time for deaths during a race. They've re-enabled the death recap UI, which details how a player died and how he performed in that life. There are a load of achievements that you can get for playing an Arena Commander. If you play all of the experimental modes, you get achievements, surviving 25 minutes in Endless Vandal Swarm, completing Pirate Swarm, finishing first place in Tank Battle, finishing first place in Gun Rush, and there's more to be revealed later with some other modes, apparently. Uh, Master Modes return for another round of testing throughout the cycle. You can now test master modes with the updated Gladius, but also the Buccaneer, Super Hornet, and Vanguard Warden. Clan Imperium want to test these sort of fighter archetypes out in master modes, so you can test these out in master mode Free Fly, Endless Vandal Swarm, uh, Squadron Battle, and Classic Race. The Classic Race mode also has a new racetrack around the Pyro Jump Point, containing a mixture of long stretches, curves, and tight complex turns. If you're testing that out, there's loads of new stuff in Master Mode. You press B to switch from SCM to Nav Mode. SCM mode allows you to have your weapons and shields, and regeneration times are shorter. However, top speeds are harshly limited. Nav Mode disallows weapon and shield usage. Regenerate times are longer. However, ships can reach their full speeds, and you can obviously quantum travel in that mode. It's the idea. They still have that new targeting mode. Auto Gimbal uh, mode has been deactivated for the short term as well. Uh, they've added Master Mode variants of several weapon records. They've decreased fire times for Gatlings. They've massively increased weapon ranges for Master Modes. Master Mode variants have a mix of of energy and ballistic weapons that can't be adjusted for those ships either so bam that, that's the ship and loadout that they want you to test with them uh, beyond all of that the patch includes a ton of performance and stability improvements and bug fixes however there are a variety of known issues clan imperium might try and drop some hot fixes before the end of the year um, but i'm suspecting that they'll probably drop um, stuff in a um, 3.22.x patch in early 2024. There are a variety of known issues. The Santoki Iron X1 flight tuning isn't complete yet. Uh, there's problems with spawning um, AI and underground bunkers. You're unable to repair vehicles that have been soft deft. Players can't exit ship with the exit seat option in the personal in the thought anymore. You have to hold Y or um, exit through other means. Uh, sometimes energy weapons show as zero ammo. There's problems with uh, tractor beams, multiple tractor beams sort of interacting with a single target. If a vehicle's landed in the 890 jump, you can't stow the 890 jump properly. And um, Players locking in at the same time can sometimes become in the same bed and they can sort of get stuck in the bed. Ships can spawn outside of uh, the hangar they're supposed to spawn in. Um, the docking sort of arm can sometimes not actually extend for you. AI enemies can get stuck in walking animations. Tractor beams can snap um, the cargo you're moving outside of your ship. Sometimes your character can spawn headless with uh, EVA crosshair always on screen. I get that sometimes and I have to relog. Players can get stuck in exiting to menu in Arena Commander and to, as a workaround for this at the moment you can open up the console with the tilde key and then type in quit, hit enter. Hopefully you don't experience many if any of those bugs but some of them are unfortunately reasonably common. Still, currently on paper and at time of recording, the patch is looking pretty solid. This should hopefully be the most stable and ironed out patch that we've ever had. It is focusing largely on quality of life stuff. I'm really interested to know your experiences with Alpha 3.22 Live. Are you having a great time with it? Or has it been a buggy mess? Is it the, the best experience you've had with Star Citizen? Or is it janky, performance hungry? Those of you that want to do multi-crew and Arena Commander stuff, you should be having a fantastic time with that because they've added those new features, they've polished loads of stuff out. If you want to test Master Modes again, bam, in Arena Commander, you can do that pretty quick and easily. But tell me what you think about those new ships and vehicles, the X1 series, the Santok Yai, the Drake Cutter Rambler. Do you like Structural Salvage, even though it's quite a simple implementation? It does add more to the salvage loop rather than less. We do know that they're going to be updating that once they get the Maelstrom tech in, which is the ship breakability stuff. It will evolve a little bit, that mechanic. Have you been visiting those new outposts and settlements? If you have any questions or any other comments, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Ho, ho, ho. It's me, Father Nordmus. That's right, it's that time again to see who's on my naughty list for who doesn't have a VPN. Ah, uh, no, that's Northern Claus. Gross from Northern Claus, Timmy. You should be scared of not having a VPN. As you know, Father Nordmus punishes all that disobey him. It's the perfect Nordmus present, Timmy. There's no excuse. I can see all of your website history, and I'm going to sell all of your data, Tim. NordVPN helps protect your online activity, gives you greater accessibility to the content you want by changing your location, and much, much more. Go to nordvpn.com boardgamer before Das Nordenclaws finds you.
every month we have a Star Citizenship giveaway. For December, we are giving away a Drake Corsair. It's the winner of the 2953 Ship Showdown and one of the stars of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. This fantastic multi-role, multi-crew, long-range mission runner can do a bit of everything in-game and it has a penchant for exploration. Just comment on any of my videos during December to be in for a chance of winning that. There are further details in the description below. A big thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile in supporting the channel via Patreon or the join button under my videos and becoming a channel member. It will net you some exclusive content from Zin and I, but also it really does help us to be able to create daily Star Citizen content as does sharing these videos and commenting. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the verse.